<laughs> What's up, fan boys what and fan girls? The house is crashing down. <laughs> Welcome back to another live episode on the tubes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm already getting tangled over here with my cords. I have uh, too many cords. Somebody introduce us. Oh my god. <laughs> well, welcome to the What the Fanboy Show. We're <laughs> the fanboys. <laughs> This, We're doing it live. Strangling myself. Over this here. mess of a man over here is Luke. Hi, Luke. Wonder Woman. Oh no, you're Luke. You're not Wonder Woman. Yeah, but I'm wearing a Wonder Woman shirt. That's fair. You are wearing a Wonder Woman shirt. But this you're, you're next Luke. to Luke in the middle is uh, Eddie Bauer. Yep. If we're going off of what we're wearing. Yep. AKA and Mr. Tyler. This guy is X B O X. No, he's Phil X Spencer. X, he's <laughs> X B Ox. The Xbox. It's box. It's box. With the Xbox. Guys, oh, it's guys, been a week. It's been a week. I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. It's been a week. It feels like it's been a month. What have you guys been up to? Luke, you go first. You always do the most. I feel like I haven't slept in a month at this moment. I feel really tired. That's concerning. <laughs> I don't you know. You should probably go you. see a doctor. I don't know. It just hit me when we were eating. All of a sudden, I got so tired. Like I had a I feel like a super normal day. Didn't feel tired all day. It was a good day. But then we were eating, and I was just like, uh, I'm sleepy. Anyway, I did, did one thing. Um, I, I watched Lock and Key. Ooh. Um, That's new. Yep, it just came out this weekend. I wasn't <clears throat> doing too much Friday night and Saturday, so I was like, yeah, what the heck, I'll watch it. Ten episodes. Um, it, was, it was fine. Um. I saw middling reviews yeah. online. Pretty, pretty more like, ma- is this like an un- an unadaptable comic type of thing? And I, I'm, I I don't know. I I bought the first one, first issue, and I was gonna read it, and I just never got around to it. Yeah. And now I honestly I don't know if I will because yeah. I'm watching the show now, and I'll keep watching it. It was it was good enough to keep watching. It's got some interesting characters, and it's really weird, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. This show is best when it gets weird. And I think that's where some people have been like, I don't know if this is adaptable because I guess the comic gets way more weird. Mm. Um, As per usual. Yeah. Um, Sorry for the yawn. There. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 good. Um, I won't call it great. I don't think it's bad. Um, I feel like the show would do really good on the CW. <laughs> mm. So it's one of those shows. Yeah. Um, that's the tone it has. Which is interesting considering it's Netflix. Ne- Netflix historically has poured a lot of money into its shows to make them look that extra. And it looks it looks good. Yeah. And it, the, it's the tone and the way the characters act that goes makes me think this would do so good on the CW. Are they all it's, like... It's, it's, it feels super YA. Are they all unreal I was gonna say, attractive? Who would you recommend this for? Is it is it for like super yeah. general audience or... It's a PG-13 show, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd say younger <clears throat> Stranger Things fans probably would like okay. it. The older audience of Stranger Things would probably be like, okay. Not enough 80s references? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Not enough nostalgia. <laughs> Um, does it have any like horror vibes to it? Because that was kind of like what it I was does. hoping for. It does sometimes, and as I was, I was watching it. This is kind of if I had to compare the show. If I took two shows and they had a nice little baby, mm-hmm. it would be Haunting of Hill House and Lost in Space. Oh, tone of Lost in Space with some ideas from Haunting because I mean it's kind of a haunted house, but it's like magical keys, right? Um. But it's it does. Weird if, concept. It is. It's. It doesn't lean enough into the scary mystical horror aspects that I think it should, and I think that hurts it. But I think. What they went for is really good for their target audience, um, but. Yeah, when it gets weird, it's it's really fun, um, when they're actually using keys. Like they're doing some really cool stuff and they kind of have superpowers sometimes or they're flying around as ghosts and getting into people's heads. And it's, it's really cool. It's, it's a wild concept. But then you have the times when they're at school <laughs> and it's like, oh, yep, the, that one's a bully. Um, they like each other, all that you know, like normal high school stuff. And it's just like, <laughs> I've seen this a thousand times and I don't care. Yeah. Huh. Um, that's always the hard part 
with, I think, the YA genre as a whole. Yeah. As you kind of fall into some of those traps. Um, I think the villain of the show could be a lot better, but the villain doesn't match the tone a lot of times. Like, there's a moment in episode two, um, and I'm just going to ruin this moment. Sorry. Um, Spoiler alert! It's, it's, it's usually has no impact on the show, but the villain goes to this place to get a key that isn't in the house, and a kid has it. Um, probably like a 13-year-old kid. She rips it off of him, uses a key that can transport you anywhere, tosses him into a subway, he gets ran over by a train, and it just moves on. I'm like, what was the point of that? Hmm. Is this to establish that she's super evil? Because I already knew that. Maybe, was it for maybe. laughs? Because it comes across as comedic. And it's, I don't know, if I'm, it was kind of revolting, honestly, but not in the, oh my goodness, this is a bad person kind of way. You, you know, I'm, I'll compare that, and I have no idea because I haven't read the graphic novel at all, but a lot of these adapted things have those kind of moments because they're in, they're iconic scenes from the, yeah, the whatever source. they're being I was, adapted from. I was wondering, I'm wondering that if too. that's something like that. Yeah, but... Was it called the Anywhere Key? Yeah. Which is... I cheated. That is a fun key. <laughs> there's some keys I'm just that... looking at the... There's some keys that are like, that is so cool. And there's some keys that you go... <laughs> what like why would you really want that like the second key they find you're like that is so stupid like you would never use that key um yeah but they (laughs) they use it for some reason how many episodes is it is 10 episodes okay um 40 to an hour yeah i think the first episode is the longest the first episode is by far the worst um that's so unfortunate I hate when shows have bad yeah, starts like it's, that. Yeah, it's it's a slow start, but by the end, I was I was really entertained. I was no, I was good. excited to finish it. Um, not a huge fan of the ending. It's it's twisty. Yeah, but honestly, if you don't see that coming, I'm sorry. I know people hate this when reviewers do it, but I'm probably gonna call you stupid. <laughs> um, they hit every single twist cliche. I felt like, mm. and I was just like, come on. <laughs> Yep, 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 oh, yep, okay, <laughs> they, hit, they hit all of them, um, which I thought was really unfortunate, and I think it would have been really cool if they would have saved some of those twists as reveals in a second season, but instead they're like, this is how everything worked out. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I could have guessed that, and I did, but... Hmm. Um, uh, recommendation or rating? Uh, low fanboy worthy. Okay. Um. It's good enough to watch. It's not a ringing endorsement, I know, but it's it's better than Matthew McConaughey. I, I know who it's for. Um, you made it sound like the first episode's the worst, so they, yeah, people should get through, what, what three episodes before they decide whether yeah. or not to stop? Listen, or? if you hate the first episode, like, truly hate it, obviously you don't have to keep watching it, but give it give some time. It gets a lot better. Okay. Once they start using keys more and the kids start working together, mm. like the, the trio of siblings... Yeah. It gets way better. How are the actors? Are they good? They're good. Good. Um, nice. I'd say at their worst, they're it's like oh, it could have been done better, but they're yeah. good. They're good, especially in for the tone and style show they're going. Sweet. Um, but yeah, it was it was fine. It was good. Nice. That was the only thing I did. What was you, Tyler? Oh, I did more than Luke. The, what do you I'm know? Nice. Wow. I don't, I well, it's quick. not the only thing I did. Oh, okay, it's the only thing important you it's did. It's the only thing oh, no. I don't. I don't need to talk about how I play Battlefront Two again. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no, we don't want to hear that. Well, I did play <laughs> something. Apex Legends Season Four came out last week. Yeah. Um, Brett and I played a little bit together. Um, this I think was the longest I had gone in a season without a win to start. Oh, like yeah. it was just brutal. Um, but I really like the updates to the map. Um, I think the map flows a lot better now. It feels busier, Mm -hmm. which is weird because the big addition is sniper rifles, and then they made the map busier, and I was like, all right, I guess. It would have made more sense, I think, when the map was big and open to make that uh, a feature, but I think I I understand why. Yeah, I think snipers were a real meta, especially on PC, Mm -hmm. and by giving them their own ammo economy, kind of making them their own thing, Yeah. you you can't just carry around a ton of energy ammo and then when you come across a triple take, switch over to it or whatever, right? right? You have to invest in that if you if that's the if that's really the wanna build do. you want to go with. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, again, I really like the map. I really like Revenant, the new character. Yeah. He's a lot of fun to play. 
Um, his skills are kind of challenging to use, I think, especially his left button I'm getting grenade used to thing. It. Yeah, it's um, tough. But he's he's pretty fun. Uh, I watched the Oscars with these two guys yeah. at, at Brett's. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We got to hang out, kind of talk, BS around a you little bit. You only have 45 seconds. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't need 45 seconds. Um, <laughs> That's then, what you guys should do for me. Yeah, we <laughs> Cue really... some music when I start going to jail. <laughs> the XFL started um, this weekend. Our resident sportsman over yeah, here. Yeah, so the XFL is it's being revived, I guess, now in, in 2020, and it's... A spring football season that will last 10 weeks. Extreme football. The X is for extreme. That is very correct. Not really. Um, <laughs> Somebody threw up. I'm going to give a quick review of it. Yeah, the dude was puking on the field. That was so good. I've done it before. <laughs> um, so the coolest thing, I thought that they're trying to make the sport more accessible to fans. Mm-hmm. So you can hear the coaches call plays. Oh, you can hear cool. the quarterback call the play in the huddle. When somebody make, scores a touchdown and they come off the field, there's an interviewer there waiting to interview them on the sideline. Like, it's they just want it to be more accessible so that people, when they watch it, they understand what they're watching. Yeah. And as someone like me who who, who loves it, like I, I love football and I I know a lot about it. It's really cool for this to reach a a bigger audience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really look forward to seeing how their week to week viewership tends. Um, and I and I really hope that this is successful because it's more football and I'll never not mm-hmm. like it. Um, self-proclaimed DC Defenders fan, because <laughs> you know a hometown <laughs> team. Um, but no, I, I'm excited about this XFL stuff. I really hope it it lasts. That's all I did, other than you know the obvious things. Guys, I feel like we didn't do a ton this week. That's fine. Well, I we, played honest. Okay, so I was sick this week. So I played, a, I played a played ton. Hooky. Sucks. I played, played a hooky. ton of Apex. Um, yeah, this fool's like fifty battle pass tiers in. I'm at what like are you eleven. Sick with? I'm gonna hold my breath, rushes. So, oh darn it! No, <laughs> what? Let me just cough over at you. Do you have the coronavirus? No. Okay. Good. What What are you drinking? Medicine. Ginger ale. It's not Corona. Is it? <laughs> It is not. I do not like beer. <laughs> um, so, in addition to playing Apex, uh, Stephanie and I finished Lost in Space season two, another Netflix original series. Um, our my thoughts on season one were kind of yeah. where you were at with Lock and Key. I guess yeah. By the end, like oh, this is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I'd say season two is very similar, and that's. A bummer in some regards because I don't feel like it ever really took off. Mm. It just kind of stayed where it was it the was, whole time. It was new in terms of we put the Robinsons back with like other people, but it fell into the they're the only people that matter and they're the only people who can do things. And even when they. Here's the deal if you disliked in, okay. Trigger warning, Last Jedi, when... <laughs> no, it's, if you disliked... It's going to be about Broom Boy. The, no, no, the whole Poe thing. Oh, yeah. No. They do that in here with the Robinsons, Ugh. except they're the heroes, because of course they are, even though it's like blatant disregard for anything else other than I know I'm right because I know I'm the smartest person in the room. And unfortunately, kind of the whole the whole season just feels like that up until like the last two. Um, we get some really good they start a mutiny. And... <laughs> we get some, well, we get some really good character Lord development. Shows up with purple there's, hair. there's th- th- three kids and two parents and Luke Skywalker. And God, I should not have brought up star Wars. I regret it already. Where's my lightsaber? Nope. Nope. Stop it. Nope. Defense. <laughs> Touchdown! Um, <laughs> are you gonna interview me? Am I gonna interview you? Yeah. No. I'd score a touchdown. Nope. Okay. I'll interview um, Luke. The kids, what is your favorite color? The kids are finally getting <laughs> some character growth. They've been very one note through the entire first season and most of the second, and they're like near the end of the second, they finally get some actual good character develop- development. And I thought it was that part was pretty good um that's probably the only thing that's going to save this from a straight to streaming i'm going to give it a matthew mcconaughey nice 
If you like the first season, it's more of the same. It's beautiful. Visuals are great. Mm -hmm. um, I was constantly surprised at how good the CGI in that looks. Um, it's right up there with like Ad Astra or Interstellar. In term I mean, it's not as quite as grandiose, but like their, their space station is flying through a gas giant like to collect, I don't know, some mineral in the air or whatever. And it's gorgeous. The way the light's coming through the clouds and things and how reflections work. Um, Lens flare? Not, uh, there's a little, there's nice. a little. I'm a fan of Lens flare, so <laughs> I think it looks dope. But I, you know, if the first season wasn't your cup of tea, I don't think the second season's all that much better. They set it up for, honestly, they set it up for a pretty interesting third season. Um, so we'll see what, we're, see if it happens. We'll see what, what I, I think it'll happen, but I would like to see some of the Netflix shows run a little bit longer. Yeah. Seems like a lot of them are one or two seasons and then This is probably at most a four season show. Um, Tell your story and get out. I mean, they could totally just keep like Making pushing them to yeah. the wrong star system or whatever. To, like, We're in another galaxy. We We're didn't make it to our final game. destination, but that's going to get tiring eventually. So... Where are they? Oh, we're heading to Alpha Centauri, but we got a flat tire, so now we're stuck on Alpha Beta Centauri. We'll go. There you go. So yeah, uh, I'll give it a Matthew McConaughey, and all right, all right, all right. Let's move on. We watched the Oscars. Yeah, Oscar. we did. Oscar, that was fun. The Grouch. Oh, dude, was not present this year. Yeah. Only while well, he was on Twitter. <laughs> There's always the Grouches on Twitter. Oh my gosh. Okay. The Grouches we... own Twitter. Okay. Initial thoughts of the show. Uh, it was mm, fine. It was fine. No host. Good, bad, indifferent. indifferent. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. The Eminem performance was cool. Mm, Siebel agrees with you. Yeah. I was a fan as well. <laughs> Especially after the story behind it kind of came out too. I thought yeah. that was really interesting. Yeah, a lot of people, myself included, were asking, why is Eminem performing? Yeah. I was thinking that. I was like, what the? Why, why was it, Tyler? Educate everyone. Oh, I don't know. Oh. I just thought the story was cool. <laughs> no. Um, so essentially, I guess it's been 18 years. He won the Oscar for Best, Best Original, original Song. song. Um, and was never he never came and picked it up. Well, he ne yeah, he never thought he would win. Yeah. So, and he, so didn't he just even didn't go. Up. And so he tweeted after the performance, like, sorry it took me 18 years to come and pick up my award and <laughs> perform my song. So they just let him perform his song this year, which... Good on the Academy. I mean, yeah. that's, I guess, that's really cool. I guess it's, they've tried to make it work in years past, and it just hasn't just, because of scheduling. Um, mm. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. But it was, I don't know. It was cool. It was different. Nobody was expecting it. He got yeah. a standing ovation. Yeah. <laughs> it was really awesome. I just loved watching the crowd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we got every possible reaction. The spectrum was so wide. <laughs> you <feel> like <laughs> Scorsese's uh, emotional reaction just throughout the entire night. Across the entire board. Yes. Yeah. Like, he was one of my favorites to watch the whole night. <laughs> yeah, I remember. What was he laughing so hard at? Um, he was laughing really hard at Kristen Wiig and my that, Rudolph. Yeah, that was. He was dying, man. <laughs> was, and rightfully so. Yeah, that they, was that, that was, was really funny. funny. Um, my favorite moment though was when Shia and Zach went yeah. out there to oh, yeah. announce the winner for live action short film. That was so cool. I love that. That was fantastic. That they've stayed friends. Yeah. I just, I just think that's so cool, and like just hearing about how Zach kind of impacted Shia's life, and I'm sure you know vice versa. But it's, it's so awesome. And go watch the Peanut Butter Falcon. Yes. Yeah, it helps that that movie's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Brett. <laughs> I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm. Uh, I'm oh, why are you it. sorry? Have you not seen it? Still haven't seen it. Bonk. <clears throat> Use it. Any? No, not yet. Bop him on the head for me. I deserve this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> what was that? When it comes to know. the awards, <laughs> mm -hmm. should there, we start with the big news? There were awards given out last night. We had the 
Parasweep. Yeah, that movie cleaned up. <laughs> that was awesome. Did I'm really happy it happened. I it really caught me off guard that it did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Parasite winning four four awards, including Best Picture and Best Director. And Best International. Best International and, and Best screenplay. Uh, screenplay. Original Screenplay. It won four big ones. It, yeah, those are all big categories. Mm-hmm. And well-deserved. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's, you know, it's high time that a international film gets this kind of recognition. Rec- for, yeah. for the longest time, it's... I think the mentality has been international films have their one category mm-hmm. and, and they can't come over into the best picture and, or if they are nominated for best picture, it's like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> here's your nomination because we yeah. have 10 nominations. Now we're going to throw you a bone. Mm-hmm. Here's a nomination. Don't worry. You'll win the best international or it yeah. used to be best foreign language. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the name change too. Yes. It's a good name change. I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> watching Bong Joon Ho go up there the first time, and then the second time, and then by the third time he's just like, I, I don't yeah. like. He's just I'm just th- here. He's just thanking all the other directors <laughs> for like being inspiration. Yeah, like he quoted Martin Scorsese mm, yeah. um, as inspiration, and like Scorsese was like clearly super moved by that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, um, probably the. Best thing to happen for Scorsese, other than maybe winning the award, is to have someone, someone like Bong Joon Ho, say like, "You were my inspiration." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. And then uh, the the blackout during the best <laughs> yeah. picture, like after the best picture, you could tell the the people who were running the show were like, "We're gonna get out of here on time. We've got one minute. We can do it." So they like dim the lights when they're. Kind of seems like maybe they're done talking, mm-hmm. and then Just while everyone in the crowd's the... like, "Bring them back, bring up. the yeah. lights, bring them oh, back man. up," because they needed, you know, one more person had something to say, right? And but I mean, they had flubbed it earlier when during yeah. the makeup and hairstyling the bombshell, yeah, people weren't done and they turned off the lights and yeah. oh my Played gosh, them off the stage. Charlie Theron's and Margot Robbie's <laughs> face of just yeah was oh my gosh, it was kind of heartbreaking, yes. like, yeah. <laughs> It was sad. Like, this is their moment. It's just like, no, move on. Sorry. Bye. Thank you for coming. Here's your trophy. (laughs) (sighs) Other other thoughts? What about Um, other categories? All I can think of is Parasite. Well, so I I won most of them. (laughs) Irishman. Didn't win any, right? Nothing. Yeah. Listen, no complaints. (laughs) (laughs) My, I think the one that interests me the most, and and I even said something about it last night, is uh, special effects. Mm-hmm. And how I I made the comment, I was like, was it two years ago, First Man won mm-hmm. special effects? And I was like, it's always the one that it's light on special effects and you can't even really tell they're there. And then mm-hmm. 1917 won it, yeah. which was the last movie in that category I thought would win it. Once again, I'm wrong. It's the one, it's the one that I predicted, and I'm certainly not disappointed by it, but I do think... I, I don't know. I just feel like it was the only award of Endgame was nominated had a, had for. a chance to win and that movie i they do great vfx work in that mm-hmm. and it's not just you know it's a big enough movie that there's like 12 different companies working on it and they all it works yeah mm-hmm. like it all looks so great yeah it doesn't, together. it doesn't look like 12 people work, or right. 12 companies worked on right it. yeah mm-hmm. um i was very excited to see taika get yep. it Oscar for Jojo Rabbit's adapted screenplay. Yeah. yeah, it was the only one that I thought Jojo probably had a chance to yeah. in, <laughs> realistically. I'm glad it won something. I'm glad yeah. it won something, too. That movie, that movie deserves to be seen and heard and not forgotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Comes out in two weeks, I'm going to go buy it. Woo-hoo. Yep, <laughs> definitely. And watch it immediately. <laughs> yeah. Um... You guys haven't mentioned Joker. I mean, I, well, we're well, saving that for later. Well, uh, we, we can talk about it. Joker won two. Yep. Um, score and Joaquin Phoenix for best actor. Yep. Best actor. That was like the only one I was. I really had a ton of stock in. I I really wanted to see Joaquin win it 
won. I didn't even know he had never won an Oscar before. And Brad Pitt had never won either. Yeah. And Brad Pitt's never won one for acting. Yeah. He's, he's won one for a producer. Producer, role. yeah. Yeah. I was just I was happy to see Joaquin win it because I thought his performance was incredible in Joker. Yeah. Um, it was mind blowing. And then he goes up there and gives a speech. <laughs> um, and some of what he said, I think, is is powerful and, and carries weight. And some of what he said, I was like, <laughs> yeah, what is happening? And he sounded like Arthur during it. And I was like, man, this is so <laughs> weird. Like, You know, I, Robert Pattinson was just hanging up in the rafters. Like, <laughs> if anything's yeah. going down. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, no, it, it's always interesting like when these actors they play the Joker specifically like a piece of that character goes with them. And it'll be interesting to see Joaquin in the coming years like his next project or it, it'll be really interesting to see what part of that character he brings with him. The He's last already a very eclectic personality. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so to build on that, not that I'm remotely concerned about him Going no, crazy or doing no. anything Joker-ish, you know, he's not doing Joker stuff. But no. like, you're right. I do think that like, part of that does stick with you. Yeah, yeah. I the mean, last um, three movies to have Joker in it have all won Oscars. The the Dark Academy Knight for Heath, Suicide and then Squad. Suicide, Squad. Suicide Squad for makeup. Yep, <laughs> and then this one. So, if you want to win an Oscar, put the Joker. I guess in. so. Or Luke's Hedges. What? The, oh, yeah, we're Lucas Hedges, yeah. I do think... Well, Honey Boy didn't win anything. So when it true. comes to Joker, though... Was it for dominating? Different conversation. Um, oh, I just lost it. Uh, the other one they won. Score? Score. Why can't I find score on my ballot? Well, you got 12 out of 24, right? <laughs> that that's, is... that's your score. I'm pretty sure it's what I got right. Mine is right in the middle, if that helps. <laughs> Am I missing something? Oh, original score right here. Okay. Uh, yes. So, Hilder, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce her last name. Respect. Hilder G. Hilder G. <laughs> uh, man, I think that was maybe one of my favorite speeches of the night. It was simple. It was humble. Mm-hmm. She Obviously... One of those things where I don't, you don't really expect to be up there, right? And so that the gratitude, Taika's was very similar to me, where it's mm-hmm. like I just didn't expect this. Yeah, um, and she may have expected. I mean, I think the there was a good chance she knew she would win, but just the message of you know, especially like her message was to, to female, yeah, female people, uh, female people. <laughs> <laughs> Female artists, musicians specifically, like if you have that music in you, let, let it, it out. out. Like we that was that's it, really yeah. cool, mm-hmm. and uh, and and it, like you said with Taika's too, you know, yeah. indigenous people. Yep. Speak up. We're the original storytellers. Yeah. Like, I loved that. I was like, man, that's awesome. Agreed. And yeah, it's always cool when people use that platform to encourage others. Yes. And to help the next person get their shot. And I think those two did a very good job. Of of doing that. Yep. For it was weird for me to see Taika not be his kooky self. Yeah. But he still was like he was like he's like I can't find my mom like yeah <laughs> yeah um up there somewhere but like to see him start to get emotional is it was it was interesting I had never seen that side of him before. That's always the coolest thing too like during these award shows like they win and like you don't ever think an actor or actress or director would be nervous, mm-hmm. but like they get up there and they're nervous like, <laughs> and you can, you can see it. They fidget, yeah. you know, and it's, it's so cool to me. It's like, yeah. I'd like to think the Academy. It just eliminates some <laughs> of that, like larger than life feel of those people, I think, which I think is really enjoyable. <laughs> kind of mm-hmm. brings, like, it makes you realize, Oh, it's okay for me to be nervous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, I don't know. I really enjoy it. Public speaking is hard for most people. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. not easy for everyone. For sure. Um, I was really glad to see Ford versus yes. Ferrari walk away with awards. Two. Award, awards. Um, <laughs> Sound that movie is film amazing. That movie's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, getting that one tomorrow. I was like, out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, February going to be hard on that movie budget. <laughs> oh, man. Put my um, backpack on. Uh, go to Best Buy. Fill it with cash and go to Best Buy. <laughs> uh, 1917. Your guys is like, 
Yeah, my favorite movie of the year. Mine favorite as well. movies of the year walked away with two. Mm-hmm. Effects and cinematography. <laughs> Boy Deacons. The cinematography one was like, yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> It's great that the other people are nominated. We get it, but uh, just give it to Deacons. It's a shame because, like, before I had seen The Lighthouse, it was, yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that movie is filmed gorgeously. Yeah. yeah. Then I saw The Lighthouse and I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's a sure in. And then it came out that 1917 was a one the whole thing. And it's like, oh, and Roger Deacons is doing it. <laughs> Sorry, we're all lost. Like, yeah, it's over it. before it begins. For me, that was probably one of my most stacked categories where it's yeah. like, dang, this is... I think overall the Oscars this year were stacked. Yeah, it yeah. was a good year. It was year. a really good year. It was a good year. Like the yeah. tires. It was a good year. Oh. Um, the only other one that I think <laughs> I really want to mention is animated feature. Mm. Um... I don't think... Snub? Yeah. I, I, honestly, <laughs> yeah. I love Toy Story 4. I think Toy Story as a series deserves to be recognized in the Oscars, and I think with 3, it was. Mm, mm. And I don't think 4 did anything spectacularly different to 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 earn another one, especially when you have... Uh, How to Train Your Dragon, conclusion of that series, really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Claws, my favorite animated movie from last year, and Missing Link, which, like, stop motion is nearly dead, and good. they keep... <laughs> I know, <laughs> Luke's like, no. It's $10 right keep now, it Best Buy. It freaks me out. Like, I just... Everybody else can enjoy it for me. I won't watch it. Yeah. No, have fun, everybody else. I don't know. I just feel like that's one of those Toy Story. <sighs> that one and uh, Maleficent, I just feel are like, Disney got money. We're going to throw names in. <laughs> Put our name out there. Please. And that's Thank and that's, that, that sucks because I don't, I'd rather showcase those smaller films that aren't as well recognized. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the equivalent of the McDonald's Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. It's like nominating two Disney movies that... Yeah. Yeah. Other thoughts? (laughs) Why do we keep him around, Tyler? I don't know. You need me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You need somebody Um, to be an idiot on the show. There was two awards we didn't even mention. Best Supporting Actress and Best Lead Actress. Um, supporting Laura Dern. I haven't seen Marriage Story. She's she's really very good in she's it. very good at I it. I stand by. She's better in Little Women. I would have liked her to get nominated for that instead, probably. Um, I think she was actually nominated for both, technically. That's crazy. Um, but I also would have had Kathy Bates win. But yeah, you won't I, hear any arguments for the me. Su- it's Laura Dern. The su- really yeah, good. the supporting actress category was loaded. And lead actress, I had only seen one of those movies, so it's hard for me to yeah, same. properly I'd, judge it. I'd seen ScarJo in I've heard good Marriage things Story. about Renee and Judy. Yep. So yeah. same. Like, A friend of mine saw all of those <clears throat> for both categories, and he, he said after he watched Judy, he's like, yeah, she'll probably win it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, good for Renee Zell, Zellweger. 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 I'm a fan of last names with Z. So. Yep. Yeah. I should have voted for her, but man, I did. What was your guys' uh, final score on your ballot? I got 16 out of 24. I didn't do it. Oh. Hey, that means I'm not the biggest loser. <laughs> I got 12 out of 24. <laughs> 50%. <laughs> I, uh, so 66. 66666. Neither of us passed. <laughs> oh, wait. You may have passed. My printer ran was, out of Is 70% ink. pass? Ds get degrees, right? We didn't have D's in I our think school, it's I don't C's, think. C's get degrees is the way that statement goes. <laughs> Neither of us passed. Next year, baby. Next and my, year. my printer ran out of ink when I tried to print it, so. Tyler, we're going to say you got 10 out of 24. I like the number 10, so that works. Perfect. <laughs> um, We have, I don't know if it's <clears throat> still open or not, but we'll check it out. 
we have a poll over on our Twitter about the weirdest Oscar moment last night. So let's see. <laughs> a little five one over there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You creep. <laughs> it's got 27 minutes left. We'll call it now. Uh, call weirdest it. weirdest moment from last night's Oscars. We had the opening number Ugh. with zero. I, I kind of no liked one, that. No one voted. I thought it was fine. Yeah, it was. It was maybe it was weird, but also always enjoyable at least. <laughs> yeah, I was late. I was at a hockey game. Uh, Eminem showing up got 14. percent I was a big fan. Artificial yeah, like insemination, that. which is uh, a quote from. Walking Phoenix's acceptance speech about cows. <laughs> milk. Got 29%. Shots fired at milk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, James Corden and Rebel Wilson showing up as cats it wins was, with it, 57%. It was great, but it went 40 hours too long. So. It, it was funny. It Honestly, I think all of the bits could have been maybe like just a little bit It shorter. should have ended after they said, as members of cast members of the movie Cats, we understand visual effects. Here are your nominees. Perfect. Yeah. And move on. You don't need to hit the microphone for t- t- like two minutes. The, yeah, you could have even... Because they did that... <laughs> they don't they, forever. Didn't <sighs> they, they do two two awards? Or was it nice just, the sh- like, just the reel and then they hit the mic? I think they did two. Okay. I, I think they could have hit the mic if they did, like, pat, 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 and then gone. Moved on. If it yeah. was five to ten seconds. Instead, it was... It was, like, 30, 30 to 40. 30 to 40 seconds, yeah. and that just feels like an eternity. Yeah. So... Also, it doesn't help that I'm not a fan of James Corden or Rebel Wilson. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay, let's move on to some news. We kind of already started with news with Oscar wins. Mm. Get Do it that, on the ground. Get that out Get out of, of here, here, Oscars ballot. Until next year, you punk. Why is, why is it a punk? Why is Oscar a punk? What did Oscar do to you? It's private. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we have any new trailers come out this week? We got some beef. <laughs> you want any beef? You are, dang it. You want to... Dang it. Want beef. beef. <laughs> <laughs> that is from your... Academy Oscar Award winning. Academy Award winning Suicide Squad. <laughs> I didn't watch any trailers, you guys. Uh, the only new we trailer. We just watched a trailer. Oh, we did. <laughs> the, what? The uh, what is it called? Jesus, Jesus rolls. Jesus rolls. What a title. It looks fine. I think a movie looks dumb as heck. <laughs> it's not a movie I'll go see, but yeah. I also haven't seen The Big Lebowski. It's so not I've... on my. It's not on my all that interested list. Yeah, I'm not. It's not, I'm not ranking that very high on my anticipation. No. Scale. The other one was Spiral. Oh, oh yeah, shoot. Spiral was that this week, wasn't it? And that one I am very interested in. Yeah, I liked that trailer a that lot. That was a good trailer. I'm Have not... you seen Saw? Yes. So, I'm guessing I'll speak for the people who haven't seen Saw. Mm-hmm. None of them will care about this cuz I did not care. Don't think it looks that good. That's interesting. Have, have, you, guys, you guys a, have fun I watching it. Was a it. really good. I'll go see it with you. I think divor- even divorced from Saw, if I think about it, I'm like, you know, this reminds me of something like The Bone Collector or Seven, mm-hmm. like those 90s detective movies more than like yep. a horror. Gore fest. Gore game yeah. show. It'll it'll get to that stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. For to an sure. extent. For sure. But it's. It, I thought it was a really well done trailer. I really like the trailer. I'm in love with the poster they released for it. Mm-hmm. And I love the title. Yeah. Which I like, is weird. I like the title. I, I really I like, the, like title. the title a yep. lot. I was like, man. That's clever. Yeah, it, it is. I'm excited it's for it. It's clever without being obviously clever. Right. Right? Sometimes it's not like so like, heavily in your face. Ugh. Yeah. That's that's like, you, you tried too hard. No. No. Yeah. It's like, oh, spiral, saw. Yeah, what? makes perfect sense. <laughs> Not, Spos- I'm excited to see Chris Rock in this kind of movie as well. I lost my lightsaber. It's pretty different for him. Um, I know he's in Fargo now too, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Mm. So it seems like he's getting into more serious acting, yeah. which is cool. Yep. I think he's reached that stage in his career where he wants to try his luck. It's another comedy gone horror situation here, so... Probably going to be good. It's a trend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm excited for it. I, I will definitely go see that one opening weekend. Yeah. 
Um, over in TV, I'll go see the one that the crap of the other movie that probably will come out that weekend that nobody's gonna see. <laughs> Which is, I don't know. Okay. Over in TV land, uh, CBS and Viacom have announced that their streaming services are combining, which is completely predictable. I think we talked about this a couple months ago, how it was like, oh, yeah, because of, like, guarantee CBS All Access is going to become either something else or all of Viacom's properties are just going to go to CBS All Access. My guess is they're going to rebrand, but... Yeah, Saul's definitely going to wait. Well, I'm not going to see it anyway, because I don't think it looks good. But I'm seeing Scoob and the woman in the window yeah. before I see They all three Viral. come out on the same day. Triple feature! That's rough. Roro. <laughs> Those are all very different. Ooh. Well, Saw... Raggy! Saw and... Women in the Window. Women in the Window have a, probably have a similar audience overlap a little bit. A little bit. I don't know. That's okay. The Spiral was probably made for like $20 million. <laughs> right. It doesn't need to make money. Um, oh, I doubt that's how it is. Any yet. other TV news? TV TV news? Um, Disney Plus released um, month release dates for Falcon Winter Soldier, which comes out in August. Um, WandaVision is in December, and Mandalorian Season 2 in October. Mandalorian's getting done quick. Yep. It's moving through it fast. I yeah. like it. It helps when you have... Have you seen the behind the scenes of how they shoot that? It's wild. They shoot on the soundstage, don't they? They shoot it on a soundstage with the... So for Solo, they developed a massive screen that they could... like. So when you're in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, you can actually see what's happening. It's not green screen. It's actual video. Wow. They're shooting... The Mandalorian on that on that like type of screen. I think they made a bigger one for the that's show. Wild, but that's insane. Yeah. They don't even have to go like find locations. They're just yeah, like it's, it's crazy. Completely eliminate the location scouting side, of <laughs> right? <this. laughs> we bring the location to you, and I'm you. sure they do some lo- like it's not. I don't think every sh- yeah. you know frame of that show is shot on there, but they can do a lot with it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's it's wild. Looking. I know, like movie making. Pretty much all of the so first episode, insane. yeah, on that ice planet was. Mm. So, that's so cool. <laughs> Very cool. Um, you got some news? I do. I got some video game news. If we want to move into that, sure. Video game. Um, Call of Duty's season two, <laughs> battle pass content stream, whatever you want to call it, starts tomorrow, February eleventh. If you're listening to this later in the week, it's already here. It's already here. Wow. Um, oh, that means you won't play Apex with me anymore. Uh, face. Yeah, I will. Oh, good. Um, no, I, there's new maps coming, new guns. They're bringing back Ghost from Call of Duty Ghost, if anybody cares about that. I know I don't. Um, <laughs> but I thought they did a good job with their Season 1 content release. I didn't feel like the guns were unattainable. Like mm. The tier they set them at was like 35. Yeah. was the last weapon you get. And I was like, oh, that's good. Good. You, it's not impossible to reach. Yeah. Um, the other video game news, Anthem is getting an overhaul, <laughs> yeah. a la Taken King style. But it, Boy, won't, it won't be as good as Taken King, though. I'm a little worried that they've announced this. This is the th- this should have been announced six months ago. Probably. Is there a target? But then I wouldn't have been able to make my Their crazy target is prediction. this year, correct? <laughs> They they didn't have a release. All date. they've said is we're gonna be quiet and not do a lot for like the next three months, and then we'll start talking about it. Hmm. They said uh, we have some work to do. Um, we're gonna put you on hold for a while. Hopefully, they realize <laughs> they have some work to do a while back. Yep, I'm a little yeah, but, uh, but I mean, good. I mean, good for them to try and support this game because the bones are there. My prediction. Uh, uh, from our 2020 prediction game uh, a few <laughs> episodes ago is that development on Anthem will completely cease. So I'm hoping this is a step in that direction. Not really. That's just for the game. In reality, I'd love this game to come back and do well. Me too. Because, because it means jobs. <laughs> that and also I would get a prediction Luke correct. Would, Luke would win his prediction. <laughs> and, and you had like the most pleasant experience. I do. I'm the only the one world. who apparently in the world this game works for. Or at least Kansas. Um, no, I, I didn't have I didn't have performance problems with it. I, I think I had one or two bugs. 
I just didn't find essentially what they're fixing. I didn't find that that gameplay loop engaging enough to continue mm -hmm. playing past the story. Mm -hmm. That I was had the problem. Every bug imaginable. <laughs> when I just had to play it. Luck. I was like, man, I can't do this. Um, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that this game can get a lot better because yeah, I do enjoy Anthem and I'd love to play it with people. That's really the only reason I stopped playing it is because nobody, no one else, nobody will play it with me, and so I play it for a bit. It's fun. I have a great time, but there's nobody. To, there's nobody to talk to about. So it's like, what's the point? I still um, got it downloaded. I'll fire it up. With play you. with me. I'll, I will take you into Grandmaster Level Three, and we'll have a grand wild old time. Okay. <laughs> I will get you some great loot. <laughs> I'll sit in the party with you guys while you do it. Sounds good. I'll play Apex, grind out some battle pass tiers or something. Just hang out. Plus, I could use a storm's help. Sometimes, heck yeah, you could. <laughs> I think I have awesome. one of those. A storm? Mm -hmm. You have all four. Right, but I think the storm. Is <laughs> you the like one actually I used. played on yeah, one. That was yeah, the yeah, one yeah, I yeah. used. No, I used the ranger. Um, I don't know. Go, go, so good luck, go, Bioware. Until new stuff comes out, it sounds like we'll be getting some stuff that was used in previous. They kind of have a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. That's still like keeping the live game alive. Uh, we'll see some yeah. some old content come back from previous seasons. Maybe just just to kind yeah, of keep not, things fresh. It's not shutting down um, as they build everything. It'll still be playable. Yeah, um, but there won't be like here's this new event for this season. Yeah, they're ga they're not having a next season. Yeah, as of right now. Um, Xbox boss. Hey, he's my boss. Is that you? <laughs> Except I don't work for Xbox, so he's not my boss. Why not? I don't know. Good question. You told me Xbox doesn't work for Xbox. <laughs> uh, glad, Phil glad Spencer that says that Xbox, Xbox's main competitors going forward are going to be Amazon and Google and not PlayStation and Nintendo. We kind of talked about this. What do you think about that? On Wednesday. I, I think he's right. I mean, for, for what their mission statement is, at Xbox, yeah, what he's it's, it's absolutely them as competitors. They're trying to bring gaming to everyone just like he is. Yeah, so I, I don't think he's out of line for saying that. Nope, I, I think it aligns with everything that they've marketed themselves to be now. So yeah. good on them. Good competition is good. So yeah. competition can, breeds greatness. Hopefully, it can innovate a lot of really cool stuff and get it working really good, so we can play games anywhere. That's right. Fingers Against crossed. Against anybody. Anytime. And then we'll be able to go home and sit down on our couch and play the next God of War on our PlayStation 5. Yes. Because that's the only place we'll be able to play it. Yes. <laughs> no, I'll do it. <laughs> that's not a diss. It's just, <laughs> I just thought that's funny. Uh, any other video game news? The Switch is not going to make a next-gen console for a while. They don't view the need to. It's doing well. Yeah. And... You know, I think currently they're in that stage where they're really wanting to phase out the 3DS here mm -hmm. in the new, near future, or the DS. They'll get everyone on Switch, and then they'll release something that's more powerful. Yeah. In another a Switch three Pro years or, or whatever. whatever yeah. yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and I imagine Switch we'll see Series X. I imagine we'll see iterative <laughs> Switch Scarlet <laughs> SKUs on that. Yeah. Where we will get slightly more power, Switch bigger 5. screen, better battery life, whatever it is. Yep. I maybe think they've already maybe cellular connectivity. Yeah, and that was potential. kind of something I think you had predicted. I it, could see it. Is. It. it is it becoming more of like a tablet. I should type. have predicted that Nintendo is going to cease operations <laughs> on the Switch. <laughs> Their most accessible <laughs> console. <laughs> um, no, I would never do that. Over Nintendo is going to close its news. doors. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that would blow my mind. In movie news, we have a sad story. Kirk Douglas passed away this last week. At the age mm -hmm. of 103, certainly that is old. Sad, but uh, he <laughs> had a very that, full life. So yeah. not trying know, to be insensitive. R.I.P. But <laughs> he lived a few lifetimes. Old. Yeah, like yes. props to that dude for going that hard, man. That's yeah. crazy. No, life well lived, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Absolutely. The story there. Yep. <sighs> There's um, another one. There's a big one. If you don't say it, I will. You can go ahead. I don't care. Doctor Strange 2. Your most anticipated movie, right? Because Scott Derrickson... Oh, wait. Oh, oh no. 
I wonder if they've got a new director for that. <laughs> uh, Sam Raimi is rumored to take over as the director of Doctor Strange 2. He confirmed this in like 2005. <laughs> rumored. <laughs> yeah. Scott rumored. Derrickson tweeted about it. He's the he executive did. producer. He did. Executive producer. There's still like no official comment from Marvel, but when Derrickson they're not, is like... They'll do it in like six months when they're like, oh, filming's yeah. beginning, and yes, yeah, Sam Raimi is doing it. Yeah, oh yeah, no, they'll do it at D23 or whatever. They'll be like, yeah. you know you've all been they'll waiting bring to him see out on stage. Sam Raimi! He's gonna walk out, put on a Marvel hat. Raimi is <laughs> walk off. Thanks, probably guys. most famous in the comic book movie realm. For Crawl. <laughs> no? No. It was a good movie. It was a good Well, I don't know. I didn't see it. You said it was a good yeah, movie. He just agrees. I love that movie. It's so good. Um, Spider-Man. Yeah. The. Baby Gator. Gator Toby Gator. Maguire. Who's that? Spider-Man movies from the Is he going to show 2000s? up in the multiverse of madness? No. He's going to walk in. Hey, no. Pizza time. <laughs> walk out. <laughs> Pizza time. <laughs> Only if he's... We, I, we, what we could get is we could get like a interdimensional thing where they're hopping around. Yeah. And he, they hop in and they see like from the back a Tobey Maguire doing like an emo uh, dance. That would be the most Marvel thing ever to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's the only... We're not getting Spider-Man in any suit. Dude, it's going to be him coming through one of his little portal thingies and he's going to see uh, Spider-Man hanging upside down kissing Mary Jane. <laughs> he's going to be like, Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Oh, Ew. and walking out. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely see that. I would prefer that over the emo dance. Just thing. him sticking his head out of the portal. Yeah. <laughs> ah, this is gross. Why is yeah. it? Why is it so wet in here? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> no. Now this is my living room. Ew. <laughs> that was my last story. That's my, a good one. No, I, I like the choice of Raimi. Yeah, agreed. Me too. I do find it interesting that somebody left because of creative differences, whatever that could entail, and a guy is coming in who had a very interesting finish to his Spider-Man trilogy with a lot of studio interference. Yeah. So what's I know it wasn't Disney Marvel, which is the difference, I guess. Right. But Disney Marvel has a pretty specific idea of what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So here's what's interesting. Uh, uh, C. Robert Cargill, who is Scott, like, famously Scott Derrickson's, like, co-writer, or Mm -hmm. writer slash co-writer, did say on Twitter, he's like, we never submitted a script to Disney. Mm -hmm. So, like, whatever creative differences were at such a high level, like, they, I'm sure... I am 100% sure they had, like, been working on ideas. They had ideas. They were throwing things out there. Maybe a partial script had been started just because. But, like, it's not like it was nitty-gritty. We have problems with the script, and you're staying on as an executive producer, Scott, because you've submitted a script and we're using it as a base, which was what I thought initially. Mm -hmm. So... Clearly, I think Scott probably still has a lot of faith in what story they're telling. Just he wanted a different version of that story. Mm -hmm. Scott, first name basis, huh? Yep. (laughs) Scott and Ryan, huh? Scott and Ryan. I'm jealous. Boys, they're in that group (laughs) chat together. (laughs) Tell Ryan his pork pen was pretty cool. That pork pen was awesome. I would never wear it. Pork pin, pork pin, pork pin, pork pin, pork pin. It went turned to pork. Really For some quickly. of the other, pork out, pin, did pork you see pin, his uh, cufflinks? I did not. I don't think he was wearing them for the Oscars, but for some of the other award shows, he had little knife cufflinks. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Were they out or were they in? <laughs> Knives out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. These are the Oscars. He needs stuff. to rip out some knives. <laughs> big story time. Let's, let's not get story to time. the big good topic. Stuff. The goods. Birds of Prey. Baby! Time out. It's oh. called Harley Quinn Birds of Prey. Uh. Formerly known as Birds of Prey. <laughs> and the, and the <laughs> fantabulous <laughs> emancipation of one Harley Quinn. 
That's a long title. Name change as of today. Well, and as of like two hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Happened like five o'clock. Yeah. I. It'll be interesting to see what kind of like, how much they lean into it, if it's just for display purposes, mm-hmm. if it's for if like all their key art's gonna get changed, if on the DVD or Blu-ray cover, what it is. I have a feeling this is more for the theatrical run. It's just going to be known as Harley Quinn, Harley Birds Quinn, of Birds of Prey. I could like see they're going to change the TV spot to Harley Quinn because that's what yeah, yeah. Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey because that's what you're going like, to look for yeah. now mm-hmm. versus Birds of Prey and the fantabulous amounts of blah 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 blah. blah. The of one Harley of Quinn. One Harley Quinn. <laughs> um, I got it. We saw something similar years ago with. Edge of Tomorrow. Slash Live, Die, Repeat. Slash All You Need Skill. <laughs> and slash that one Tom Cruise we'll movie. We'll see if it if it works. Um, I think currently they had a pretty weak weekend. Weak opening weekend, mm-hmm. box yes. office wise. I it think did, this it, is a pretty quick heel turn to try and get more traffic next weekend during Valentine's Day. Yeah. They need to do some marketing to really make their brand more recognizable that said we all saw it yes we did and yeah, we, we got did. some thoughts do we are we, we allowed to have thoughts nope do you have to pay for our thoughts we must be one of the collective they're like 15 dollars though they have to pay 15 dollars to hear our opinion throw shade <clears throat> <laughs> no i'm i'm no nice cast Charge. throw shade throw shade <laughs> throw shade <laughs> if i could throw my not bah! my computer yeah hit him with this hammer this no, this is mine. Let me I see actually it. I grabbed one at the theater. It's okay, mine. tangent over. <laughs> Birds of prey. Tyler, give me your thoughts. Overall. Overall? Overarching Twitter thoughts. What do you got? Twitter thoughts. I think I tweeted. This movie was incredibly fun. It was more fun than I planned to have that night. And I can't wait to watch it again. It was awesome. Luke? Loud, colorful, chaotic. Hold on, let me go to my profile so I don't mess yeah, this up i should have looked at my tweet um i actually went and saw it twice um, yeah you did. i wasn't doing anything sunday so i was like i'm gonna go see this movie again because i really really enjoyed it um, twitter you suck my actual tweet was <laughs> saw birds of prey last night i had more fun than i was prepared for uh my first tweet was birds of prey is a blast great cast great action and a ton of fun um and my second tweet was john wick kill bill Deadpool equals Birds of Prey. I can pretty comfortably say if you like one of those movies, you'll enjoy Birds of Prey. I saw it again today, and it's a fantastic film. Yeah. Um, and I got this hammer. It has air in it. Uh, why did we let him bring that? <laughs> so I can do this. <laughs> you could knock over your very expensive X-wing, <laughs> X-wing if you're not careful. It's all right. Um, X-Wings have shields. They last a bit longer than TIE Fighters. <laughs> you can also put it back together. I love this movie. This <laughs> is this movie was the perfect way to start off 2020 for me. I it's, agree. It's got, it's got humor. It's got, like you said, surprisingly good action. Yeah. Action was the thing I was worried about. And after the first 30 minutes, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> We're I doing have, this. I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> um, Thank you, Chad Stahelski. And like... My my tweet reference is just the fact that I love where all of the DC DC movies are right now. Yeah, they're in a good spot. Between you have the the the, the huge budget epics that are just kind of dumb fun like Aquaman, mm-hmm. and, you know, visually spectacular. Then you have the like really heartfelt, fun loving Shazams. Um, that that that's like. This is what reading comics as a kid was like. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what I imagined. This is Saturday then, morning cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got Birds of Prey, which is like a more fun Deadpool. Yeah. Honestly. A better written Deadpool. A better written Deadpool. A Deadpool that's not so far up its own bleepity bleep that like, you, you know, it's not going to age out of being funny. <laughs> that was what I was trying to figure out. That's why I was like, "What?" Deadpool's comedy is so the thing. Of the okay, time that like in five years, no one's gonna get that movie. It's yeah, good. It's, a it's meme. funny. I love both Deadpool's, but like 
This movie takes that what does it mean to be meta and raises the bar. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I love both Deadpool's too. Um, I think we all, we all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're both they're both great. <laughs> they're great. Um, and I don't want people to think I'm insulting Deadpool. Um, I think Deadpool can handle it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he'll come back and make some joke about me, or it's he'll okay. just kill you with a zamboni. Oh man, I don't want to die by Vance, <laughs> Vance zamboni. Um, but for me, the things that drove me crazy in Deadpool are the Mimi look at my balls humor. Mm, it yeah. drives me insane. And then also, mainly in Deadpool one, it takes place. It's flashbacks and takes place on a freeway. There's not really that much action in it. Mm-hmm. And honestly, that's why that movie was so much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Than Birds of Prey was to make. Yeah. Um, what they what they gave us was was really good. Um, but I think Birds of Prey really stepped that up. Mm-hmm. Um. And even in Deadpool 2, I mean, they stepped it up a lot. I mean, they made $700 million, million dollars on the first Deadpool, so they could afford it. Yeah. You know? um, but, yeah. The action in this movie was, like... It's so good. So I, I like... Good. You read the tweets, and you see the reviews, and, like, the action in this movie is really good. And you're like, cool. I like a good action. The action in this movie is really good, guys. <laughs> like, I mean, the, I fact what... that, the fact that Luke threw, like, John Wick on his list of, like, yeah. if you like this movie, you'll like this. Like, it's totally deserving. I mean, yeah. I threw Kill Bill on there, too. Yeah, yeah. What I like about all the action in this movie is, like, it's not the action scene we've seen a hundred times. Like, it's all creative. Yep. Every every set piece is something, like, new and refreshing, whether mm-hmm. it's roller skates or bouncing a bat off the ground These, like yeah. it's just so many cool little things like that that fit so well in this world i'll wait till spoilers to say more but the police station scene was like blowing my mind oh yeah yeah um i think that's one of the best action sequences i've ever seen in a comic book movie man and it go like how this movie is paced also really impresses me because we got there's the the police station is broken into two sections yeah Mm -hmm. and like i got done with the first section and i'm like that was a great action scene like i'm ready for like okay like let's go to the next place what's our next exposition and yada 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 and then it's like nope here we go keep going like okay we're back in it (laughs) what that's i think that's where it it improves upon that deadpool formula like when they have the rewind thing in deadpool Mm -hmm. it feels like it takes forever to get back to that point Mm -hmm. and this there's like the rewind and then you're right back yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. And just like another, like re- regarding action sequences, obviously they use stunt doubles for yep. some of it, but you can tell that the actors did a lot. Yeah, yeah, and they put a lot of effort into like it. Like watching Margot and <laughs> first name basis, uh, <laughs> and Journey Smut Bell and Mary Elizabeth Winstead do these things, and they're like up close. You can see them. Yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't. how do they do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, no. it's just so awesome to see. Yeah, they put a lot of effort. And, and I think it comes with Margot, first name basis. I think it <laughs> comes with like her just like her commitment to it. Like when she did Suicide Squad, she was super committed to that role, to that mm-hmm. movie. And I think she just loves playing Harley. Yeah. And, you know, as she's a producer on this one, um, I think she, when they set out to cast, she casted people who love the characters they're playing. And and so, like, it it pops off the screen when you watch them. They care about the character they're portraying, mm-hmm. and it's awesome. Yeah. It makes it that much better. Mm-hmm. Um, Kathy Yan. Um, I, re- I really want her to just get a whole bunch of movies. Because <laughs> I thought she did a really good directing this. Mm-hmm. First major film i guess yeah she's done one other feature but it was a it was an indie yeah, yeah indie feature um if that's even a term yeah <laughs> a little small film something about dead pigs i think but um it's called dead pigs <laughs> um but i thought she did a really good job um taking don't hit the it, ground with the balloon sorry i need to just drop it but <laughs> it's not a balloon it's an inflatable <laughs> Um, taking Harley's mind and making it into a cozy story. And maybe Christina Hodson, the writer, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe just all of them taking a really wild, untrustworthy 
character and making a really nice story out of it. Yeah. Wrapping it up with a little bow. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Agreed. I'm, like, I... <laughs> If it gets a sequel, geez, if it doesn't, I might be a little upset. I will be super um, bummed out if we bummed. don't get more of this because I think they tee it up really well. Yeah, but I'd love to see what else Kathy Ann can do because I feel like this is really going to put her name out there for a lot of oh, really cool she'll stuff. She'll get more work for sure. It'll yeah, just regardless be, is of it money. Birds of mm-hmm. Prey 2 or is it something else? I, th- I think... I'm hoping the legs on this are good. Yeah, I think I'm it, hoping I th- the next couple of days. My prediction weeks. would be that they are, but who knows? Yeah, maybe its second weekend is really strong, and then yeah. we completely is, forget about this. Conversation. It's Valentine's yeah. weekend coming up. I mean, Birds of Prey was number one at the box office this past weekend. It, it was a, it was a underperformed. Slow, it was a slow weekend overall. Yeah, yeah nothing, yeah. nothing did well. Yeah, I think top five was like this, despite being the weekend. <laughs> yeah. The like Oscars weekend. Mm, Sometimes yeah. you get like, oh, I didn't I'm hearing see. good things about. I bet I bet lots of people were at home watching The Irishman and Marriage Story. I'd like to see Netflix mm, release the numbers the, the of who watched the, the first weekend. two minutes of those movies. <laughs> yeah. Um. One one more thing I want to hop on before we go into spoilers is uh. Black Mask. Ewan McGregor. So good. Incredible. Um, the 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 ladies on the protagonist side of things in the story so good and he stacks up against them really well Mm -hmm. i just loved seeing ewan mcgregor let his hair down and just have fun yeah you (laughs) You know what i mean having a ball everything we've seen him in it's been pretty serious yeah for him to just get to to clap be loud be eccentric like it was awesome i don't (sighs) I'm trying to think if he's ever done anything like it. It's so different for him. Mm-hmm. And he's so freaking good. He has moments of weirdness in Doctor Sleep, but not like that. Like <laughs> But man, he was so good. I lo- Yeah, he was incredible. I loved Black Mask in this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. I think the only other comment I would have before we go into spoilers uh, cuz we want to give our general reviews or uh, ratings, ratings, yeah, for sure. Is that the, you know I don't know if it's. I don't feel like the marketing has really let on that this is an R-rated movie. Mm-hmm. And marketing for this movie has been bad. It's yeah, been very bad. Unfor- and DC marketing is usually so good. That's so what's confusing to me. Um, the Walter Hamada style. But like, there are a few moments in here that, if you're like squeamish, could could come <laughs> off as like, oh, that's a bridge too far. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, particularly one scene with Ian McGregor, mm-hmm. um, yeah, showing that he is a villain, like very much a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say it made me uncomfortable, and I'm glad they didn't linger on it. But um, that yeah. would be the only, like, the only note to go along with my rating because I'm going to give this movie a booyah. Um. So this starting this year, I kind of decided I'm not going to give something a fanboy worthy just because it's rated R. Yeah, um, I'll if, adapt that to that. If if you're not old enough to see this, and I, most people, I feel like at this point in the in our world, don't really abide by that rule anymore. Right. So I mean, but I do know people that don't go see rated R movies. I'm not talking to them. Yeah. They're not even going to give it a chance, I guess. So, and here's the deal. No matter Thanks like being my voice of reason today. And I... unless you're like <laughs> us, you pro if like if you're if the number of movies you go to is less than 10 a year, you probably ought to be looking at what is this rated and why is it rated that way? Yeah. Um because if you are going to more than 10 movies a year, chances are you just love movies yeah. and, you, and you don't really care. Now mm-hmm. there's going to be some, you know, overlap there where you know maybe the you're a high schooler and you got going to movies is your thing yeah. on the weekends. Yeah, this might still be a little too mature for you, but yeah, was <laughs> that? These two are having a private conversation. It, I'm no, sorry. I was saying my literal justification <laughs> for the rating was because it was rated R. So when he says that, and he's like, "I'm going to do that this year." I'm going to stay consistent so that we're all on that page. Yeah, I think. I, think, I think that's a good model to adopt here yep. in 2020. Mm-hmm. We're going to give you our opinions based on the quality of the movie, not its rating. Yeah. Yes. Take our rating, take our, our 
rating. Yeah, well, like with I a grain of salt, then you should check it on the movie's rating, actual rating. Yeah, <laughs> and compare and say, okay, this movie is for me. This movie is not for me. Yep. So yeah, booyah. I am out of booyah too. I love this movie. Um, it's my second favorite modern DC movie. Mm. I'm out of booyah as well. Yep. Especially since we're adapting the rated R thing, it's no longer a barrier that we can't cross. That's what we do at What the Fanboy here. We're breaking down <laughs> barriers. Knock them down. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, should we jump into some spoilers? We didn't even mention those. I don't know. I, I feel bad. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? Starting our rap group, dude. We're going to release Saw our Birds cr- of Prey. It <laughs> oh, was no, really no, no, great. No, no. I had a great time watching this movie. That was great. Okay. My brother's the rapper, man. I can't. Good, can't do that. Good. Logie, um, we need you, bud. Go to <laughs> iTunes and Spotify and listen to me and my brother's album, Light. I made the beats. He wrote raps. It's super dope. Um, there's a song about donuts on it that will go harder than anything you've heard. <laughs> good stuff. Plug. <laughs> I love it's it. good stuff. Heck yeah. Donuts. Also, donuts. I think Logan is actually going to release a new song here soon because he just... He did a Twitter or Instagram thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can win a free shirt if you go like his post and share it. Um, okay, yeah, Birds of Prey. <laughs> That's thing. Um, I'm just plugging my bro. Logan, you're welcome for that free promo. I love you, bro. Five dollars, please. Anyways, yes. Birds of Prey, spoilers. <laughs> we're, we're doing this thing. Mm-hmm. Let's get the elephant out of the room right away. Do with it. Black Mask and just completely obliterating him at the end of the movie. <laughs> He's dead and I'm super sad. But I'm I'm sad about it, but I think it was the. How do you think a villain's gonna handle the situation, right? Like, so she has to kill him. Here, here's the thing, and I've been this has been my issue kind of over the last couple, I don't know, a year or so. Mainly dealing with like Batman and stuff. You see in movies, Batman has been always in Hollywood movies. Even though he's not supposed to, he kills people. People always end up dying, and so the question is. Why would you kill henchmen that are trying? They're just doing this because there's nothing else to do in Gotham and they're trying to support a family, maybe. Mm. Why would you kill him but not kill the Joker, the person that is doing all these horrible, right. heinous things? Right. So when they killed Black Mask, my first reaction was, no! Now we don't get to see we him We don't get to see him anymore. Yeah. But lots of people die in that movie. Mm-hmm. And if they would have left Black Mask alive, I would have been like thinking the same thing. Right. Why are we leaving this dude that is just going to break out and force all these horrible things to happen? So I'm actually really glad that they killed him. Um, that's my perspective on it. I still am really going to miss Ewan because he is so freaking good in this movie. Yeah. I, First name basis, Ewan. <laughs> <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't bother me as much when that happens because story conventions, things like that. But um, I, I'm really bummed that they killed him. I thought Ewan McGregor was so, so, so good. As Roman Sionis. Um, oh, good. Xbox back. Xbox is back. Xbox. Um, <laughs> and I just, I really loved his get up, like his complete outfit. When he finally yeah. puts the mask on, I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, this is so dope. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. There, there's room for a new guy to move in and take over that empire now. Yeah. So. There's, there's so many gangster level mob level dc villains c level villains that you that they can use yeah batman has one of the largest rogues gallery i say batman birds of prey gotham that that world there's villains out the wazoo they'll be fine yeah yeah oh yeah yeah what'd you think of black mask and his death oh it was awesome yeah it was good i just (laughs) loved his scream (laughs) as he fell off (laughs) (laughs) fantastic yeah i thought it was great i really like the the pier scene leading up to it too, like mm-hmm. uh, it's all really foggy, mm-hmm. and she's shooting this. St- well, she shoots the one shot she, at the statue. <laughs> like, that, that was embarrassing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the banter in this movie is so much fun too. Mm-hmm. It really is. No, I I'm bummed we won't see more Black Mask, but fitting in for a terrible person, yeah. and it's a villain movie. How do villains handle problems? They kill people. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I don't like. I it was what I expected, but I was kind of bummed about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So agreed. Um, and then, and then right after that, we got a little monologue and the setup of 
the next birds of prey. The movie. actual the actual birds, birds of, of prey. prey. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's you know. That's my only con <laughs> for this movie, actually. So, I, I, which part? Just that we didn't get more of them. So. But I mean, it makes sense. It's a it's it's a pro for me, although marketing wise, I don't. Again, I think this movie is marketed horribly. Yeah. I'm actually kind of glad that this was. Margot's yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. She really got to stretch her legs in here mm-hmm. and show us who Harley Quinn is. And it didn't just become another uh, Guardians team up movie mm-hmm. right away. Um, I'm glad that we, luckily, through some time jumping, we get to see them interact at different points kind of throughout. And then by the end, it is like, okay, third act, final scene. I loved how they didn't. Here we are together. Mm-hmm. And then let's set up. Where could we go in the future? I loved how they didn't work together at all. Like, like w- with Harley and Black Canary. Like, they weren't on, like, hey, we need to save the day. Yeah. yeah. It was very reluctant. <clears throat> yeah. I just, I think my con more stems from I enjoyed them so much that I wanted more of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not sure. that I didn't like what they did. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you gave the film a booyah. <laughs> you yeah. enjoyed what they yeah, did. Yeah, once you removed that R cap, I was like, oh, yeah. I guess the film a booyah. I hated it. No, <laughs> no, no I, I, I get it. That's the only thing I wanted more of. And it, my con says, wanted more of the birds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm okay with what I got, but I wanted more. I wanted more of the movie. Like, I didn't want it to end. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was just having way too much fun. So. <laughs> so, we are talking about action a lot. Yeah. This is a major part of the film, but one of my favorite parts of the action, and this comes from another complaint I have whenever we're talking about females beating up males in mm-hmm. movies. Because what is the complaint people always have? Oh, a girl can never do that. I can never beat up a dude. First of all, a girl could easily knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> also, guys have a very... Con- Singular weakness, <laughs> and they exploit it so much in this movie, and yeah. I loved it. There are so many nut shots in this movie, mm-hmm. and I'm like, they take out the biggest dude, yeah, <laughs> by hammering him <laughs> right in the bojangles, <laughs> and he goes down. down, and I'm just like, yes, finally, <laughs> like this is how you do it. I love it. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. Oh, and I was, I was kind of feeling a little bit of pain too, but you know, yeah, as one does. Also, uh, no, I'm requesting nobody knock me out. I don't be a nut shot. No promises at all. I don't need a nut shot. Any if Tyler's not a here, small one day, punch will like in the arm nothing, will probably get me. There's nothing protecting you. Wait, so I stand here so you don't punch him, in the, or I sit here so you don't punch him? <laughs> yeah, because I love Anthem. That's not gonna help you much. Ah, <laughs> ah. Oh man, I think this thing wins. Pool noodle versus <laughs> inflatable. Inflatable balloon. It's a balloon. It's not a balloon. Um, <laughs> other thoughts on the movie. Bruce. Bruce is awesome. <laughs> I love Bruce. And I was legitimately sad when I thought Bruce was dead. And then yeah. I was legitimately happy when I found out he was alive. <laughs> they fake John Wicked. it. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> um, I just love the little laughs you hear from Bruce the whole time. When they're like, watching <laughs> Looney Tunes, <laughs> yeah. they laugh. And, <laughs> yeah. In the back of the I think. Um... Just the cast and their chemistry yeah. was really good. I liked how they were all different. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, I just I feel like I got to tip my hat to Margo. She's yeah. so good in this yeah. movie. You can tell she just loves playing Harley. She really just lets it all out. It's so fun. She is <laughs> probably the best young actress working today. Like how old is she? Twenty eight. Six. Eight. Oh, okay. I and, looked it up because I was super curious. And we have her as a DC character, like in a comic book role. Like mm-hmm. you exploit that. And a comic book role that she She's wants to do. Wants to play. She's really good at it. Yeah. It, yeah. She rocks it every time. I got super excited for James Gunn's the Suicide Squad watching this because I'm like. Margo's I really love that Harley. they didn't shy away from Suicide Squad either. I yeah, I too. thought that was so awesome. Mm-hmm. Getting the picture of Boomerang on the wanted poster, yep. I was like, heck yeah! And even footage from Suicide Squad yeah. with yep. her transformation. Yeah, yep. I was like, okay, this is awesome. We're not shying away from mm-hmm. it. Joker was not just mentioned once in the beginning. Like, I broke up with the Joker. The end. 
Right. She it's got not, the pudding cups tattooed. Right. Out. Like it's a huge part of who her character is, <laughs> mm-hmm. and her whole transformation through the second act requires her to deal with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I really i I would kind of I, thought this would just be like a let's ignore everything that came before, but they totally didn't, and I think it worked really, really well. Yeah. I've just never seen somebody deliver such a emotional performance over losing an egg sandwich. Yes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like that Did you w- get an egg sandwich after you watched it the second time? <laughs> nope, I got one Saturday because I had to take my car in, nice. and when I was waiting for it, I walked over and I got breakfast. And I was like, <laughs> yes, can I have an egg sandwich? A little bit of hot sauce? I want to taste the cheese. <laughs> I need a gif of that. I want to taste that cheese. <laughs> and I will tweet it and I'll pin it to my Twitter profile. Um, so you need to find it. You talked about the cast a little bit. I just think that each of the supporting characters, uh, Rosie Perez, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Journey Smollett, Bell, yep. and Ella J. Basco. Basco? Basco. I'm just going to say yes. Uh, <laughs> like, I think they all do a lot with the... The moments they're given. The moments they're given. Yeah. We kind of talked about how this isn't like a team up movie from the beginning. Each of them have through lines through the whole film, but it's not, they're not on screen all the time. They're kind of like little vignettes until they all get together. Mm-hmm. And I just think that the writing was really good and they acted the crap out of it. So, yeah. I, I really enjoyed Journey Smollett Bell she... as Black Canary. I, was awesome. She kind of shocked me a little bit. I didn't know what to expect from her. Yeah. From, again, the marketing for this movie, not great. I was concerned that they were going to lose who Black Canary was, mm-hmm. and they did not. They did a really good job of, of giving us a, a true Black Canary type yeah. character. Her, her first action scene outside of the club. So good. <laughs> so, so good. good. So good. Ugh. I you see that emotion there in her, like, I really want to drive away. I know Harley's just another. She's a bad. She's person. a bad person. Yeah. She's a yeah. She's a B word. She's a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, and she probably wouldn't save my skin, but she has that inner conflict. And yeah. She wants to then, help people. And, and then she like freaking kicks ass. I love like, it. Yeah. Love it. Oh my gosh. So Black Canary is one of my favorite female superheroes Mm -hmm. um she's way up there and i did not get what i wanted out of black canary with arrow oh i thought i was gonna get a different version of it when they made it sarah and then that show just fell off a cliff with everything involving felicity and they lost their identity and it was just very frustrating it's just kind of filled that void <laughs> for yeah. me. I got, I got Diana Lance. Yeah, which was awesome. the The one canary cry you get is better than every canary cry you get in Arrow. <laughs> yeah. It's so freaking good. Yeah, mm. yeah. My wife was crying <laughs> during that scene. I look over and she's like, <laughs> <I'm> like "What?" <laughs> like it's epic. Yeah, I loved it. Great moment. Mm-hmm. Great moment. And then. Following that, oh my gosh, the chase scene. Again, this movie just <laughs> never slows down. No, it does but, not. But it doesn't feel exhausting. Mm-mm. Like, there's this great chase scene with Huntress and Harley. <laughs> Harley's on her rollerblades. Huntress is on, Huntress on a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> like, pulling her and slinging her. and oh. Then she yeah. breaks her skates. Oh, sad day. It is sad. I wanted more action <laughs> scenes on skates. <laughs> they were awesome. Um, what do you think of Victor Zaz? Actually, I, was, I liked him. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not familiar with him. It's, I thought he was fine. I was. I thought he was good. I thought he was a good henchman. Mm-hmm. I was worried about him. Actually, I was like, where does he fit in all of this? Yeah, I thought he was perfectly written for the role he had. Yeah, me too. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I thought the dude who played him, he was good. He was creepy. Yep, creepy. Yeah. He was weird. Very creepy. Really good performance. Yeah. Um, small role, but perfect for what was needed. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a really big fan. I just like, I really enjoyed watching him like trying to corral Sionis when he would start to go off the rails. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. I was like, yeah, that's the kind of character that I could see Zaz being mm-hmm. yeah. in this. Because I didn't know what I wanted it to be. Yeah. But I liked it. What else? 
ridiculous. Um, so uh, are you going to order number 32? <laughs> mild or with extra chili? <laughs> extra chili. Extra chili, obviously. I don't know if I should trust Harley. Um, did you guys like Huntress? Yeah. Yes. I did yeah. too. <laughs> she was awesome. She was awesome. I assume... I mean, there was her... nobody I didn't like, so... Yeah. I, I assume her backstory is the same as what's in the comics, yep. right? Yeah. And she's isolated, so she's, like, socially awkward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She... Great. Yeah. She, yeah. she was awesome. She was awesome. Yeah. Um, so... When the, when I the love... Sec- oh, no, but first off... The crossbow killer? The crossbow killer? <laughs> <laughs> She worked so hard on on delivering her kill line. Yeah, yep. <laughs> she never got to. Do you know who I am? The crossbow killer. <sighs> Helena Bertinelli. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> no, but oh. I guess speaking of um, Renee Montoya, um, so the second time I went and watched it, I was noticing. So in the in the comic she becomes a question. Yeah. Yes. And in this one, she is connecting everything to Sionis. Everything. Like even things that honestly don't. Um and I feel like they're kind of I don't know if they are, but Is that their nod to her? It could becoming... lead to her being it's like either, everything is connected yeah. type yeah. person. Especially which is kind of what we got in Justice League Unlimited. Um I don't know as much from the actual comic. Mm-hmm. Um but to see her be like, and this is connected, and that is connected, and this is connected, and that is connected, it's just like, oh. Very cool. Oh, they are kind of doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was hoping at one point she would put on a hat. Mm. Next just movie, as like a joke, jo- like when they did the lost and found thing. Mm. Oh I was like, oh my gosh, that's their chance. They're going to do it. Her shirt killed me. <laughs> that shirt uh, uh. is Pete's shirt from The League. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. He divorces his wife because she throws it away. Or she gives it to, she gives it to the cleaning lady, so he like moves out and takes his he pays his cleaning lady for her shirt. Oh my gosh. Oh my sorry. Tangent. Um some other like kind of things. I was just like I wonder like what they were maybe if they were gonna lead to something with that, but like um Rosie Press's ex works for the DA in Gotham. I don't know if that is the dude who's going to be in the Batman, who's currently DA, the dude Peter mm. Sarsgaard, I think, is playing, mm. um, or Harvey Dent. Um, and also, there's a lot of times where I feel like they're about to mention something, but they don't. Yeah. like A lot of tongue-in-cheek. Like when um, Black Canary is first in Sionis' apartment, and he's going around looking at all this stuff, and he's like, and this is a statue. It's of me, and it was made by... and then. Zaz speaks up. Like, was that about to be a name drop? And I, I mean, I know a lot, but I don't know that much. Like, is there some sculptor that, where was it? Clayface? I don't know. Like, oh, is that a, just a clay thing? I don't know. I was like, oh, someone who knows more than us, tell us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked, I liked that it, it didn't shy away from the stuff before it, but it also didn't have to be like, this is in this Coming universe. Coming up. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is in this universe. There's a Superman T-shirt. It's absolutely. Like, it was cool to not. It's absolutely have to do standalone. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that they're doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Also, let's go back to the East End of Gotham. I'm down for more stories in that area. Oh, it's so nice to see a carnival. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been longing to see a carnival in Gotham yeah. for ever. I don't know if we've ever gotten <laughs> one. Not counting the show Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, say, not in I the, didn't watch it, so. Not in the movies. Yeah. No, I, say, not, I don't think that the they've movies, ever done it. Think. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about? Should we, we could always speculate about sequels and stuff, which is always fun. <laughs> I mean, we can go that route. I, I yeah, think yeah, they I, do a good job of leaving you, you know, Harley leaves. Yep. She's like, all right, you know, I, they've no, served not, their purpose. I'm not a part of the team. I'm not a good guy. I'm going to go do my own thing. Yep. Oh, um, I guess one thing we could talk about is Cassandra Cain. It's been kind of one of the controversial parts because in the comics, she's Batgirl. Um, she does not talk. and She's orphan first, right? Yeah, she's... An, well, no, I think one of her parents is... Her dad is a mercenary and maybe her mom's Lady Shiva or something. I don't know. Once again, I don't know everything. Um, but that is not at all what she is in this. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, they could still go that route somehow. We just don't really, we don't know that much about her. 
I um, also feel like just based on her character, that could be one of her aliases, Orphan. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking of. Sorry, got confused there. That character could have totally like that. That might not be. They could write a thing where that's not her name. Yeah. Right. She's a pickpocket. She steals things. She stole someone's name to help protect her identity. Mm. There's another Cassandra Kane out there. I don't. I don't think they'd go that route, but. If you they needed to backtrack, they could. If they, they needed could. to backtrack, they also, could. Also, I know people love Cassandra Kane. It's definitely somebody's favorite character out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have much attachment. I have no attachment. But there's like four Batgirls. Yeah. And if they pick one, it's it's going to be Barbara. It's going to yeah. be a Batgirl. Um, but I guess speaking of sequels, um, throw Batgirl in there and you'll have a, a lot more box office. <laughs> I, th- I you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> throw the bat symbol in there and you'll have a lot more box office yeah yeah unfortunately um but i mean when i was just thinking because at the end of they show their outfits i don't love them um respect like more huntresses it's, it's it looks good it looks comic accurate ish but it's not i don't i didn't think it was fantabulous um but i think it like bring in barbara gordon who has a connection oh a connection to body armor and gadgets and cool stuff and so, yeah. yeah so i mean there's an option for you um what i do like about huntress's thing is her mask going like her this. mask was yeah. cool. Yeah. i was like man that's different i've never seen anything like that also it's just hard to tell kind of what the outfits were because they're only on screen for five to ten seconds at most yeah. <laughs> so it's <not> like <laughs> I think it, I don't know. It's fine. I think Dinah has like the blue jacket with the yellow line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty standard for Black Canary. I'll have to. They didn't go the fishnets route. No, well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not it's not a con by any means. No. It's like I know lots of people are going. Ooh. They didn't put the Shazam budget into suits. We'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They went more street level. Yeah. Which is good for these characters. Yeah. Street level is, I think, where they need to stay. Also, if you're going to put the budget to either costumes or action, please go action. Yeah. I really enjoyed the action. Fight in a t-shirt and some jeans and have great action. And I will take that over anything, any other time. So, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I want in a sequel other than probably just kind of what you mentioned. Um, I do think it would be good to get... To get uh, more a list, more a list, something. Uh, I mean, one of the things they've talked about, like that Margot's been like, she's she's like, I still want to do stuff with Gotham City Sirens. Yeah. So like, cast Poison Ivy, throw Zoe Kravitz in there as Catwoman, have them go against the Birds of Prey and Batgirl. Yeah. There's a movie for you. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> that would be wild. <laughs> Call it Birds versus Sirens, Dawn of. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I can't think of anything that rhymes with justice. <laughs> I don't know yeah, I don't if know. Uh, if he would be up for this. Did Zack Snyder? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say, what if you brought Jared Leto back as a villain? As the Joker? As the Joker. I think that ship has sailed. Um, I think he has to. I think he recast. I, yeah. I, I think if, yeah, if you go Joker, I think you recast. Look, he's <laughs> and then you just start over, act like it never happened. Yeah, which is what I also think they're gonna do. I, with I'm, I'm still not. I'm still not real sure with how the continuities flowing between all the movies right now because it, it makes more sense than X Men. That's true. <laughs> You're I not mean, wrong. So I mean, she talks about. Um, cause, cause, well, she talks about Suicide Squad. No, no, so I understand that. And Suicide Squad was clearly in the in the Snyderverse yeah. DC universe with Ben Affleck as Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? but I mean, what they talk about is so generic and vague. She was captured by Batman. She got a bomb put in her neck, went and saved the world. Like, that could have been anything. Like, right. It didn't have to be versus Enchantress. I mean, one of the things I thought about was, is the Suicide Squad a prequel? And like... Uh, was I talking about you with this? Like, she gives Rosie Perez her Harley Quinn body armor. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what she wears in the suit size squad. I don't know. Just the thought. You never know. 
And, and not that everything has to line up nice and neat, but it, but when but when speculating, it is like it makes it easier. I'm like, okay, like I don't <laughs> know what's what's on the table for toys that I can play with, right? Yeah, now. and I mean, f- focus on making a fun, Absolutely. enjoyable movie. Make a good first. movie first. Don't yeah. worry about tying in all and it, these other characters. Yeah. And that's what was so cool too. To. Like Kathy Ann talked about that in in some interviews. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, we didn't. They didn't make us consult with each other at all. We, yeah, just, we were great. told make a good movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think that's important. The the dots can be connected in post credit scenes if you really want to do it. Yeah. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to overfill your movie. Yeah. We have one universe doing that already. Mm-hmm. We don't need another one. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. I'm I'm excited for whatever sequel they try to spin out of this next. Me too. I would like to see Birds of Prey, um, just because I want to spend more time with those characters. I, I and those actresses. I let's keep them. Love it, all of them. Um, and if we do the Gotham City Sirens thing, love it. Mm-hmm. Love that idea. Would love to see Harley and Poison Ivy on screen together mm-hmm. because they are so much fun in the animated series. Yeah, they are so much fun, and I can imagine. Margot's probably done plenty of research into it, and yep. she's prepared to do it. So yeah. it it would be awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, when they're asked who they want to bring in, the ones they always bring up are Poison Ivy, and they either mention Batgirl or Oracle. Yeah. Um, but that seems that does seem like Matt Reeves' kind of area. Yeah. They might have to do a little bit of consulting there. Yeah. Mainly because of casting, if they're actually trying to connect stuff but yeah. yeah i think villain wise for a birds of prey movie you go street level gangster human trafficking we've kind of talked about this in the past you you go that route for gotham city sirens you could do whatever you want yeah because harley obviously will intervene if people suck so cool yeah. Nice. Any other go, thoughts? Go see Birds of Prey. Go see yeah, it. Please go support if it. If you are old enough. <laughs> Just go see it if you want. Yeah. If you're if you're interested, go yeah. see it. If it looks remotely interesting, I think go see it. Go support kind of this lower budget. It's not that low budget, though. I mean, go support these kind of movies. Yeah. I, it's a good movie. More mm-hmm. than just like we want... I guess if we're not we're not here pushing an agenda, we legitimately think it's a good movie yeah. and it should be it re- it should receive the attention it deserves. We are in spoilers though, so maybe we talk to the people who've already seen it. Probably go see it again or not. Yeah. Some people watch. There's spoilers. lots of there's lots more yeah, movies coming true. out. Go see it; it's really good. Okay, it's a lot of fun. Uh, fan box, real quick. We had a couple questions. Thank you for submitting those over on Twitter um, at with the fanboy. Hit me with your best shot. Steitson asks if you could eat <laughs> only one fast f- eat at only one fast food place for the rest of forever. What would mm. you choose? It's a long time. Taco Bell. <laughs> Do the all fast food locations turn into that fast food location? I think you're just only allowed to walk into those fast food locations. Then I choose McDonald's because they're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> It applies. Also, also everywhere. Also, oh. I love McDonald's. They kind of like their fries, man. They're good. Oh, sounds good. You know, Tyler, for the Oscars, you guys brought over Brahms. Mm. I might have to go with Brahms. Well, good luck only living in like three states. <laughs> That's fine. Sucks to suck, bro. <laughs> They've got the best ice cream. Sorry, I'm breaking the lightsaber. I didn't know what it was. I, I thought the cat was in here. Meow. I'll put it down. Um... Good question, Stephanie. Great question. Oh, great oh. question. Ragashingo has a comment, a random thought. Are you the cats? Yes, we're the cats. Uh, he says, any general Hi, random thought at all? Can you provide a Dropbox link? <laughs> I will get to uploading them shortly. You may want to go ahead and update one of those to business plans for more space. I don't know what he's going to share with us. but uh, We have an email for that. Yeah, it's with a fanboy gmail.com. You can submit questions there and or, comments. Or your thoughts. Or your thoughts. And we don't have to pay for a business plan on Dropbox. <laughs> Touche. Um, and then, thank you for that question, Raga. Uh, and then finally, Mrs. Eitzen. That's my mom. Yes. She asks, what was your favorite and or most impactful movie or show between the ages of two and six? And why? 
So is there something that early in your childhood really stood out to you as a like a defining thing that you uh, consumed in entertainment? So I thought of two immediately. Yep. Uh, my favorite TV show as a kid was Barney. Oh, yes. Um, loved it. I think there's a lot to learn in mm-hmm. that. I love you. You love me. Love your peers. Yeah. As yourself. Um, and then my favorite movie growing up, and this is, I, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and it's, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why I loved it so much, but Free Willy. Oh, yeah. I loved Free Willy. I watched it every night before bed as a kid. Um, I had a, a little orca plush that I slept with. Um, I accidentally burned a blowhole into him. You're a man of the sea. With uh, with my lamp. Oh, my. Because he didn't have a blowhole. So I took my lampshade off and... Wait, so it was less of an accident and more of a... On purpose. Yeah. <laughs> it was an accidentally on purpose. <laughs> Give me a blowhole. But I wanted a, an accurate orca. There you, uh, that's true. Willie that's, did it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Why can't mine? <laughs> so, no, I don't know. I think for Barney, it just taught me about loving each other. Yeah. Um, and for Free Willy, if you love something, let it go. Mm. I didn't learn that from it, but I think that's the message in that movie. Um, Good this, music, too. This is hard to say. I don't remember very much when I was two to six years old. And I don't know if I watched it when I was two to six year old or was older, but I watched a lot of Arthur. Mm, yeah. Um, that was... <laughs> <laughs> the fist. Yep, it's a meme now. But that was the show I watched a whole lot. Um, and then... Jeez, I don't know. Movie Probably... I don't know how much I would have learned from it, I guess, but probably like the Land Before Time movies. I loved yeah. Dinosaurs. I mean, who didn't? Yep. Those were a lot of fun and sometimes even kind of scary. <laughs> you learned to overcome adversity with your, your friends. That's what you learned. Yes, that's right. Sure. <laughs> Something I'm like just trying that. to think of whatever you could have taken from those movies as a child. I learned that T-Rexes were not all bad guys. Don't Chomper. judge a book by its cover. Because yeah. Chomper. <laughs> yeah, Chomper was great. The pterodactyl T Petri. Petri Petri was man. very annoying though to me. <laughs> very annoying. Um, you I you had all those like weird names and then you had <clears throat> Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm Littlefoot. I'm Petri. I'm Spike. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> it's, what? it's like Star Wars. Everybody's got these wild names. I'm Luke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What's your name, Normal? I'm the main character. (laughs) Exactly. I have to be relatable, too. (laughs) Um, The show that I remember watching growing up was Winnie the Pooh. A lot about friendship, doing what's right, maybe sometimes overindulging in honey, but (laughs) always looking out for each Everywhere other mm-hmm. yeah living how to learn uh learning learning how to live together in community um and you know lots of good lessons i just watched oh it was, it was probably almost a year ago by now i watched uh my mom gave me a bunch of the, the one of the poo vhs's and the little tv with the vhs vhs player awesome. built in and uh and I was watching um, one of them with Claire because she hadn't really seen any. I, she'd seen them one or two here and there. And I was watching one where uh, this little robin bird gets, like, injured and Rabbit, like, takes care of it and, like, mends it back up and it's like his child. And then it's winter time. And he has to let it go migrate. I was sitting there bawling my eyes out. <laughs> and Claire like turns around and is like, Daddy, are you okay? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> oh. And then, okay. So that was, that. honestly, that one probably, probably shaped, Winnie the Pooh probably shaped me more than any other show. Um, or, or movie for that matter. Uh, this might be pushing the age limit. For six years old, I don't know when I watched this. Uh, was it Training Day? Jurassic Park. 
Mm. Jurassic Park blew my mind um, and was way more informative about, like, who I was as an adolescent. And, like, like I loved dinosaurs, Land Before Time, right? Like, I got to see a freaking dinosaur, <laughs> like, in the flat. Like, that was the most amazing thing ever. And it really cemented my love for movies and cinema, and it's why I want like i want to tell stories and Mm -hmm. why i'm amazed by the medium of film so mom you may know when i actually watched that i feel like i was around like five or six years old um but i can't confirm that. i know i was i was way too young (laughs) for the like the parental guide but you guys had pre-watched it and was like you're like you can handle it (laughs) i'll do it again um, so, one that I just thought of, I don't, I might have been older too, but since we're breaking rules, um, the why not? old, old, the animated Redwall TV show. I didn't see that till a little later in life, but so good. That was amazing. Um, me and my brother had just started kind of getting into those books. Yeah, man, I read every one of those books. I did not. I started to read some of them, and I'd just be like reading it, like ah, I don't get this. <laughs> that was like that was my middle school like life was. Yeah, red wall, red wall, red wall. But those those animated shows really helped me understand the stories a lot more, even though they they did differentiate. Yeah, which is normal for yeah. shows to books, but I love those. <sighs> like to that was a great series. That's kind that... of like an origin of fantasy yeah like that and narnia yep. and like all those opened so. up that door to yeah you, yeah to you. yeah red wall's a great like uh Went for my live action red wall with that disney money no the disney oh. animate live act the cg oh. whatever they do Shoot, that'd be dope kind of like remember that cool. what was that show or it was like a little 20 second spot mouse guard yeah that looked full real cool yeah Mouse Guard looked awesome. Do that with Redwall, and Mm -hmm. I'm here for it. (laughs) Yes. Start with Marl Fox. No, don't. That wouldn't be too scary. I would start with (laughs) Redwall. Yeah. Do your Redwall, do your Matameo, then do your Martin the Warrior, you know, the classic order. The classics. The classics. Uh, What was the one with the Badgers? What was the mountain name? Oh. Oh. Ugh. Um. It was so, oh. I think, I know they shout Alulia or something like yeah. that. Um, Salmon Dastron. Yes. That one was awesome. Mm-hmm. And then there was. How many books are there? <laughs> oh, there's like 20. There's like, a lot. Like 20 wow. to 30. Uh, some of the later ones weren't as good, but like one was called Triss. And that was like an ocean, like a seafaring one. One of them is called the, the Legend of Luke. The Legend of Luke. Martin's father. What's his name? Luke? There's one that where rats like steal a baby uh, otter and train it to be a bad guy, and then like he has to he has this existential crisis. Like, <laughs> who am I? I that's awesome. I shouldn't you, be the you, bad guy. I never read Redwall, dude. They're so so. I, they're they're young adult books. But, oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're good, dude. I love maybe even young younger than book. young adult, like kid. Like I was a pretty I was a pretty stupid kid. I wasn't good at reading, so. <laughs> Um, I, d- I didn't get it, so I like the show. And I mean, I've always gravitated more towards visual media anyways. It's how I learned. But, yeah. um, like, I still understood the books. I understood there was an author. Yeah. And me yeah. and my brother and really good friend Ryan, we, we went and met the author one time. Oh, nice. It was a lot of fun. So that was really cool. Something I always wished I could have done. Yep. That's our show. I like that question. That was a Thinking about the question. good old days. Yep. What shaped us into who we are. Thinking about free willy. So thank you all for listening and watching. You can find us over on Twitter and Instagram at what the fanboy. You can for socials to enjoy the show. You can watch it over on YouTube. We're live Monday nights at eight PM Central Standard Time or anytime after that. The show is just live on YouTube. You can watch it then. Or um, Wednesday after that Monday, the show goes out on our Apple Podcasts, Google Google Play Podcasts. It's on spot. We're on Spotify. We are. 
Um, we'd love for you guys to go rate us. Yep. Give rate, us a review. Rate and review. That helps a we lot. We really appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe Ding. so you never miss a, a, an episode. Thank you all for listening and watching. We'll see you next week. You lately. See ya. Ukulele means victory in Badger speak. <laughs>